talking about the internal issues with the Jews. Mm. And so he's trying to say that this is do is that this this king of right, king. So I'm gonna bring up I'm gonna bring up Sam now. So no, no, let me let me let yeah, me you can respond. Argue. Yeah, it's your turn. You can respond. Go ahead. I'm I'm bringing up Sam and he can speak after you speak. My my my, my argument here is not my this king this king whatever yeah. My my argument is yeah that these churches of Asia all turned away from Paul, yeah. And uh Paul even wrote to Timothy telling him that all of Asia have turned away from me. No problem. All these churches have turned away from him, yeah. So when Paul uh, when Paul dies, yeah, after that year, Jesus sends John on a mission. Revelation chapter one, verse twenty, yeah. I'll I'll read it with Revelation chapter Sam, you alright, yeah? Yeah, I don't, buddy. I actually like you. I like your demeanor. You're respectful. You have to be. You have to be respectful, man. Yeah. You're so gonna, I want you to come on my channel too, man. If you're like this, I can. Uh, we can inshallah, talk. Inshallah. Bro. <laughs> all right. Re 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 Revelation chapter one verse twenty. Jesus talking about, you know, he's saying that the history of the seven stars, which those see it. Oh. I'm on the King James version. In the in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, and the and the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlestick church, seven candlestick which thou soweth, and the seven churches. Yeah, these are the same churches that all rejected Paul. Yeah. So my argument here is yeah is the next chapter. Yeah, my main arguments here now, Revelation chapter two, verse one and two. Right. Revelation. Uh, yeah. Revelation chapter two, verse two. One and two. So now Jesus here is he's talking about the church of Ephesus. He's talking about each each you know church turn wait, by wait, turn. Wait, can we can we address? Yeah, oh, yeah. You brought up Acts twenty one. You brought up Second Timothy. Yeah. So uh, let's go to Second Timothy because you said all Asia abandoned him. You didn't read the entire chapter and you ignored that it's hyperbole because the same Paul then tells you Luke is there and Timothy's going to bring Mark. So go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and read for our friend from verses 10 to 20. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 10 to 20. Yeah, you read a portion mm -hmm. and you and I both know in literature, and you'll find this in the Quran, you have what's called hyperbole. Just like in John 12, 19, mm -hmm. this believer told Jesus, uh, this disbelievers say the whole world is following after jesus well we know the whole world is not so when he says all of asia left me finish mm -hmm. it read from 10 to 20 and see is that literal or is that hyperbolic hyperbole like we use today so human language both past and present will use expressions you know so is it, is it, really, but read it for me is it second timothy what yeah second what? timothy 4 10 to 20. 4, 10, 20. Chapter oh. 4, verses 10 to 20. Yeah, read that for me. For, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved the present world, and has departed from Thessalonica, whatever you Christians, of for Galatia, Titus, for Thalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark Who's and bring him. Before you move on, friend, uh, I forgot your name. Is your name Ali? Ali, Ali, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ali. Now, who's with him? Luke and Mark, Luke and Mark. So did literally everyone abandon him? What's that? Who? Did literally everyone in Asia abandon him? And who? Uh, uh, Paul. Oh, because you're talking about Paul, because you're mentioning Timothy. This is Paul talking to Timothy, and he says, Luke is with me. He didn't abandon me. And Timothy, you didn't abandon me, and neither did Mark. Bring Mark, because he's useful to me. No, he's, he's, he's saying that the, that the people of Asia have... Turned. Yeah, but Asia is Turkey, and so yeah. Paul is writing to Timothy and Mark, who would be in Asia, so yeah. they didn't abandon him. And continue reading, you're going to see many did not abandon him. You took hyperbolic speech and took it literally. So when something is literal, you allegorize it. When something is hyperbolic, you take it literally. Keep reading. And Tychicus, whatever, I have... Tychicus. I have sent to Ephesus, bring the cloak that I Where's Ephesus? Wait, wait, hold on. Where's Ephesus? In Turkey, right? Asia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the so he sent Tychicus to Ephesus? Yeah. To people that no longer believed him? I thought you said they all abandoned him. So why, where is he sending Tychicus to? 
No, what my argument is here that Paul's got rejected and now he's sending other How people. How is he getting rejected when Tychicus is being sent to believers in Ephesus who accept Paul and those who follow him? Reread what you just said. Where is Tychicus going to? I, Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. I've okay, been the book that I have left with Carpus that uh, try us when you come on the book, especially the parchments. Alexander, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his work. You also must be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our word. Keep for on. you must be, must be a bear. What's 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 yes, 15 then. You must no, be aware no, of him. 20. Keep reading to 20. I'm a, I'm a first defense. No one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord would deliver me from every evil work and perverse. He preserved me from for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory for forever and ever. Amen. Great Greek, Prisca, and Aquila, and the house. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Who, yeah. who did he say? Say it again. Mention those names slowly. Prisca and Aquila. <coughs> He's of the husband and wife team that's mentioned in the book of Acts as well that taught Apollos. So what did yeah. he say do to them? He said, Greek, Prisca, and Aquila, and the household of... of oh, name once... Yeah, well, so uh, are you seeing a pattern here? He just said that no one was there at my side, but Luke was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay, so you're taking him literally, or is he being hyperbolic here? Exaggerated form of speech. I'm going to get Mark and bring him with me. So so this verse 11, when he says, only Luke is with me. Yeah, he's in prison with him, right? But because yeah. why? He told you he sent Tychicus as well. So there were people with him. Who are ministering to him in prison, but he sent them elsewhere. But he kept Luke behind to minister to him. And he goes, Now you bring Mark with you, but then also greet these people like Priscilla and Aquila. But he also mentions a few others. Go to 20, you'll see. Erastos stayed in Corinth, but Trophim was I have left in Elatos sick. Why did he leave him? Because he abandoned him or because he was sick? He couldn't take him with him. It's still include, but tell me I have left him no sick. In no, these, 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 these names are confusing to me. I don't have a clue. Yeah, maybe well, someone else can read it for you because I know these are Greek names that are hard. Maybe Avery can. No, it's but not good. Are you it's catching not good. the point? He mentioned just a list of people that are faithful to him who are ministering in Asia among believers who are faithful to Paul because you don't send Tychicus to Ephesus if there's no one in Ephesus who believes in Paul's message. What I'm trying to show you is, just like you don't want me to read misread the Quran, when it's literal, it's literal. When it's poetic, it's poetic. When it's hyperbolic, it's hyperbolic. You took a hyperbolic statement of Paul and you emphasized it to the point of hyper-literalness when Paul in this very same chapter is showing you, not everyone literally abandoned me because if there was no one there at my first defense, what is Luke doing there? Okay, now we, can we go back to Acts 21? Because that was the one I wanted to address for you. Which one? Acts 21. Acts 21 because that's the one that you want, you mentioned. Because that's the key one that people use. That here you're saying that James, and by the way, I would agree with you, Ali, that in Acts 26, Paul is not defending himself against the accusation of the Jewish believers. What he's defending himself against is that there were certain unbelieving Jews in Acts 21 that accused Paul of bringing Gentiles into the forbidden part of the temple and got him arrested. That's what he's defending against. That's in Acts 21. So Acts 26, he's defending against that charge. But you, your point was valid in that there were Jewish believers, meaning those who believed in Jesus, yeah. who were zealous for the law, yeah. Jewish believers who were zealous for the law, yeah. and they were told, now you had to read it carefully. Since a lot of Muslims don't read it carefully. If you read Acts 21, 18... To 24, it says, they've been told that you go around among the Jews, living among the Gentiles, yeah, telling yeah. them that they need to forbid, you know, no more circumcise their children and abandon the customs of Moses. But yeah. reread that carefully. It says, they've been told you say that to the Jews. It's not about the Gentiles. Is it true, Paul, that when you minister to Gentiles and you yeah. go among the Gentiles and the Jews there, you tell the Jews, ethnic Jews, 
hey, don't get circumcised and forget the customs of Moses. No, you can't find that in any letter of Paul. And here's my challenge out of love for you as a brother in humanity. If you read Paul's letters, I will challenge you to show me where he's telling ethnic Jews don't get circumcised. Or rather, is he addressing Gentiles? You don't need to get circumcised, especially for salvation, because circumcision saves no one. He's talking to Gentiles in his letters, whereas the Jews are being told, you're going around telling the Grecian Jews who live among the Gentiles, they don't need to keep the law of Moses. So what do you have to say to that, Paul? But then let's read it. So you don't take my word for it. We're going to read Acts 21. Maybe Avery can read it for you. Acts 21, 18 to 24. Avery, read it for him. All right. So on the following day, Paul went in with us to James and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they had heard it, they glorified God. Okay, they pause, said, pause right there, Avery. Did they say, damn you, Paul, for preaching a different gospel to the Gentiles than the ones we preach? Nope, they praised God for it. Okay, so did you catch it, Ali? They have no problem with the gospel of Paul to the Gentiles. They glorify. That's the chapter. Now, you may reject the chapter. That's okay, but you quoted the chapter. So let's read the chapter in context. Did these Jews say, Paul, damn you for telling the Gentiles they don't have to live like ethnic Jews and get circumcised? Or did they glorify God for his ministry? We chose. That's, that's the chapter you quoted, yes, right? Chapter what? What Acts, was that? Acts 21. Acts 21, he 21, said, yeah. The chapter you quoted, 18 to 20. And he's going to get to the point that I want to make. Yeah, so we're going to mention Acts 21. I didn't mention it, right? No, he says that uh, 18, the next day, Paul and the rest of the others yep. went to see James and all the elders went present. Paul greeted them and reported in details what God had done amongst the Gentiles, yeah? Through yeah, the really? And when, when they heard this, they praised God. You mean they, they damn Paul and saying, God damn you, Paul, or they praise God for what he was doing with the Gentiles? That's no, they, the they, they praised him. They praised him for what, what, for what he was doing with the For what he preached Gentiles. to the Gentiles, right? Yeah, they were, they were, they were, they were happy with him for that. And, and okay, that. but that's my point. Let, let's take it step by step. So they had, do you agree? The chapter you quoted, not me, you brought it up. They have no problem with his message to the Gentiles, right? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah, now yeah. let's continue what their problem is. Acts 20. You read 19. Now keep reading 20 to 24. When 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 they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed on all of them and tell us, uh, jealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live amongst the Gentiles to turn away from you. Well, now slowly, brother, you're reading too fast. Don't read too fast. Well, you, they heard these Jews who believe in Jesus have heard you teach who? They have heard that, that you teach you? that you that you teach all the Jews who live amongst the Gentiles. Ah, so they don't have a problem with the message to the Gentiles. They don't need to get circumcised and keep the law of Moses yeah. to be saved. They're having a problem. These Jews that live among them, are you telling them that as ethnic Jews they are no longer to get circumcised? Are you serious, Paul? So that's the accusation. That's so now let's see what Paul says. Now keep reading. Yeah. Uh, Telling them not to circumcise the children or live live according to the customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come, that the Jews will hear, so do what I tell you to do. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites and pay the expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. They then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law as for now, the, before you, now before you before move on that was 24. you cannot show me a single place and anywhere that paul wrote that he himself as an ethnic jew so i want my point to be clear as an ethnic jew he ethnic jew yes. did not keep sabbath or the dietary restrictions as an ethnic jew he did what his point was that the gentiles are not required to live as ethnic Jews and keep these customs that defined the Jews as a distinct group from the Gentiles. They don't have to do that for salvation, and neither do we do it for salvation. But as ethnic Jews, we still do those customs in honor of the God of Moses, whose now law has been perfected in Christ. But now 
What about the Gentiles, though? Now read 25. What did James say about the Gentiles? Read 25. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our discussion, no decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. Yeah. Okay, now, as you pause there, you notice they're referring to something previous, right? Yeah, yeah. And then what are they? They're referring to the Council of uh, Jerusalem in Acts 15. And what was the debate about there? There were Jews, Pharisees, yeah. telling Gentiles, you got to get circumcised, keep the law of Moses to be saved. Now, Paul and Barnabas said, no, that's not true. Now, I want to ask you a question. Peter and James and the yeah. apostles, whose side did they take in that issue? Paul's, I think. Yes, they did take Paul. So then why would you say that Acts shows that Paul destroyed the law when the very book of Acts you're citing yeah. shows that James and Peter and the other Jews, the Jewish elders and apostles of Jerusalem, agreed with Paul that circumcision doesn't save and Gentiles don't need to get, get circumcised because they don't have to be ethnic Jews. They need to trust in Jesus Christ as we do to be saved. But as ethnic Jews, we as ethnically Jews, we still honor the God of Israel by keeping those parts of the law of Moses that Gentiles don't need to. Where's the problem? The problem is, yeah, these people were, were not then Asia. Peter, Peter, James, none, none were, were then Asia. They just actually helping Paul here. Well, why did you quote Acts 21? You quoted it. What do we? No. Didn't no you? Yeah, you quoted think, Acts 21. I know, but what I'm saying to you here is, is these Jews of Asia are complaining. To, okay, but where please. in Acts 21 did they complain? So do you agree that Acts 21 doesn't support your point? Then we can go to Asia. No, because you quoted Acts 21. I didn't bring it up. I heard no, you bring what, it up. So what you agree? What, what I'm trying to say here, there, there's been an accusation by the Jews to to these to uh, James Law that this where? one calls going. Where? Where? I've, I've told you Acts 21 verse Yeah, and verse then we read 21. it, right? Okay, but that's my point. Now, when we read Acts 21 in context, it didn't agree with you. It disagreed with you, didn't it? Because the accusation was not the Gentiles. You're teaching Jews, Jews among yeah. the Gentiles. Yeah. And then what did James do? Did James agree with Paul, though? That as far as the Gentiles, yeah, they don't have to get circumcised. They do these no, other things. We told no, the, the Gentiles did, did not need to keep the laws, but it was the Jews. But these, but these are the ones that these these Jews are, are the ones that are angry. Saying, why is he saying to us? No, but Paul did not say. I said that to the Jews. That's misinformation. That is a lie. That's a rumor being how spread. Do you know? How do you know? Because Paul not only went and showed obedience to James' wishes. In Acts 18.18, 18, without James around, Paul was already observing the Nazarite vow, Acts 18.18. 18. So he was already observing the law without having to do so due to the peer pressure of James in Jerusalem, Acts 18.18. 18. So why but, is he keeping the law when no one's on his uh, you know, on his shoulder saying, hey, hey, Acts 18.18, 18, read it. I'll see in his finger then. Right. Uh, uh, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the, the brothers and sisters and sailed to for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off a country before of a vow he had taken. Oh, wait. So notice the same Priscilla and Aquila that he mentioned in Second Timothy four, right? Yeah. And they're here with Paul, and Paul is now fulfilling a vow that he took by shaving his head, which is a Nazarite vow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nazarite vow. And that means that's the same vow that those four other men were observing in Acts 21? Yeah. And so Paul already is observing the law as he is going among the Jews who are living among the Gentiles, showing that he is complying to the law, so the rumors are a lie from the very yeah. book you but but you know but if you read uh, Acts chapter nineteen verse eight and nine yeah if you read that they 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 have some uh, disagreements. Where in Acts nine it's about Paul's conversion Acts, where Jesus Acts, appeared. No Acts chapter wait wait I'll, I'll, I'll actually read it Acts chapter nineteen verse eight and and nine. Yeah, read, there's no disagreement about what Paul's wait, teaching. Wait, wait, wait. It's about wait, 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 Baptism wait, wait. of John and whether they even knew about the Holy Spirit. Uh, where's it gone? First comment. No, no, sorry, it's Acts chapter 19, verse 8 9. Yeah, the Acts 19. That, what's the context there? 
Mm -hmm. the What's, what does that got to do with mm -hmm. Acts 21 and James and all of them no, agreeing? Because, no, because it says here that Paul entered the synagogue and he spoke boldly for there for three months, arguing and, perf and persuading. Wait, 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 wait. Let me let me read it all. Yeah, and, yeah read it. So it's not do about law, it's about convincing them Jesus is the Messiah, and which people yeah, did not understand. No, no, but then about the kingdom of God. Yeah. Persuading and what's them. the kingdom of God that the king has no, shown up? You know, I know, but, but, but hear this out. But but yeah. some of them became ob ob obscene. They refused to leave and publicly... Believe what? Wait, 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 wait there, wait there. My bloody internet's bloody crashing. Really? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it says there... Uh, See there, but some of them became ob ob obscene and they refused to leave and public mal in the way. What way? So Paul what way? left them. Paul left them. He, he took the disciples with him and discussion daily. So there yes. was disagreement Friends, between him. You're trying hard him. now. I'm going to make it easy for you. You're yeah, trying yeah. too hard and it's not helping your case. Can you show me anywhere in that chapter that Paul is being condemned? for saying to the Jews living among the Gentiles, you don't have to get circumcised when he's trying to proclaim to them the kingdom of God has come because the Messianic king has come. His name is Jesus, which they objected to. No, he's talking about, this, about the kingdom of God. Yeah, and That's what right. is the kingdom? That means the king has come. And who is the king of the kingdom according to the Jews? Kingdom of God. The, yeah, but who establishes the kingdom? Come on, I have to take you throughout the book of Acts to show no, that no, the no. kingdom is established by the Messiah. By the kingdom of God, yeah. But, okay. but, but they didn't believe Jesus' Messiah because he was killed. To them, a dead Messiah is a useless Messiah. But Paul is saying, no, the Messiah had to die, be killed, and rise on, no, on the third day. Sam, they Acts, 17, Acts 17, verses 1 of 4, friends. This was his debate among the Jews. It had nothing to do with... Hey, God's kingdom is upon you. So you Jews, forget about circumcision. You're Acts reading what? that in the chapter. Acts what? Acts 17. what? Acts 17, verses 1 of 4. 1 of 4, yeah. yeah. Read it. See what they're fighting with them. The entire book of Acts is how the Jews are hostile to Jesus being the Messiah, the Messianic king who ushered the kingdom. When Paul and his companions had passed through uh, oh my word, um, Ampelosis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there were a Jewish synagogue, as was his custom. Paul went into the synagogue, and on, on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from, from the scriptures, explaining and proving from the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jews I am proclaiming to you is a Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were, pers were persuaded and joined Paul, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. Okay, so some believed, others didn't, right? And so yeah. when he's going to the synagogues, is he debating them about, hey, should you get circumcised, you Jews? Or is it about the king, Messiah, has come, and he suffered like the prophet said and rose again, and that's Jesus. Some believe, and some probably not all, because if you continue reading that same chapter, you're going to find Paul is being opposed by both Jews and Gentiles because of the view of Jesus, which, by the way, according to Acts, James and Peter agreed with. So... Can we put Acts aside now? Because it didn't help your case. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't I mean, know about that. No, no, but it's, it's, it's complicated. Come on, you know, you know that and I know that as well. I'm going by the chapters you're giving me, and none of those chapters supported your assertion. These Jews, come to, these Jews are seen Paul at the temple, grabbed him. Why? Put him out. Because, Why? He was, because they were accusing him of... Preaching no. against the laws. No, they threw him in prison because they thought he brought Gentiles in the area of the temple forbidden for the Gentiles. Let's read it. Go to Acts 21, read 26 down all the way. Read it. Let's see. That's not why they, they threw they threw him in jail. It's because they accused him of bringing yeah, yeah. Gentiles in forbidden territory and the area that was forbidden for Gentiles to enter. Read Acts 21, 26 to 28. 26 then paul took the many i've done that a little louder so we can hear you he did an offering he did an offering in verse yep. 426 but when he come to 27 when the seven days were near over some jews from the province of asia saw paul at the temple they stirred up the whole crowd and seized him shouting hello israelites help us this man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law yeah, keep and going. this place 
and beside and besides he has brought Greece into the temple the uh, is this so why did why did they stir up a crowd not so much he was yes. against because they brought he brought they accused him falsely by the way he didn't yeah two he gentiles into the fruit maria and that's why they went crazy what you defiled the temple with gentiles no but it it, it also says people everyone that he teaches everyone everywhere against yeah, our you, people. You, you can't have I'm your cake and eat it too. Uh, no, so it's half, half. It's 50 50. Yeah, He's but uh, Ali, you can't have your cake and eat it too. The reason why Paul was there was to show he's fulfilling the law by offering the sacrifices for the fulfillment of the Nazarite vow. You just read it. So, how can he be in a position to the law when he's complying to the law? He, that's he, the option. That's why in the temple. You just read it. Read it again he, 26 he, 28. Yeah, the twenty-six and uh, another twenty-six. The twenty-six one where where he had, where he had to offering James ordered him. You mean so was James there in Acts eighteen eighteen when he offered an offering for the Nazarite vow that he fulfilled in Acts eighteen eighteen when James wasn't around? So where was James in Acts eighteen eighteen? He, he did that, but he did it then. Okay then. Yeah, but why? But I thought James made him do it. There was no James in Acts eighteen eighteen. Why? He didn't make him do that, but he didn't. Oh, so he it. still did it out of his yeah. own free will. But the main argument is, yeah, these Jews of Asia. Come on, when 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 Paul says they're not Jews of Asia, they're Jews in Jerusalem. You didn't interview any Jews of Asia. It's the Jews in Jerusalem who are believing a rumor that's not true. Now, can you show me a Jew in Asia saying, "Oh yeah, Paul said we didn't need to keep uh, circumcision"? You're quoting me no, Jews in it. Jerusalem who are going by a rumor that Paul is refuting. So why is Acts twenty one twenty seven saying when the seven days were near over, some Jews from the province of Asia? Province of Asia, so Paul. So these were Jews from Asia, and they're in Jerusalem, right? They they come to Jerusalem. They, yeah, they and that's my point. You can hear rumors spread by anyone anywhere. Paul just falsified the rumors, and they're in Jerusalem, stirring up question, uh, stirring up a crowd under false pretenses. So why do you take that part and ignore the other parts where it shows that Paul exposed their lie, and they're in Jerusalem spreading this rumor? That was my point. Can you show me Jews in Asia? Not Jews that are from Asia, stirring up the pot, spreading a rumor that Paul has just falsified in Jerusalem. Can you show me that? When, where Jews in Asia said, hey, Paul, uh, I'm a disciple of Paul, and I follow Paul. He told me I don't need to get circumcised. You're quoting enemies who are hostile who hate Paul, just like they accuse Jesus falsely of blasphemy or of sorcery being demon-possessed. So why is Paul saying in 2 Timothy 1, 15, yeah? I know you said he's not, he's not, he's not all of Asia, you know, he's saying not not Ephesus. Why is he saying all of those in Asia have turned away from me? I don't I don't so understand this. Okay. So now you agree that Second Timothy doesn't end in chapter one, right? It goes all the way to chapter I know. four. I know, but then so he's, he's, we stop he's, in chapter one and not go to chapter four to have Paul explain the hyperbolic nature of his language. Or Paul just wrote chapter one, but forget chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. So are you telling me that there were a lot of people in Asia that actually agreed. I'm not telling you. Paul told you in 2 Timothy 4, 10 to 20, where he said, Tychicus to Ephesus, obviously among the believers there to minister to them. But if all Asia abandon him, what believers is Tychicus ministering to? And why is Mark still following Paul? And why is Luke with him? And why is Priscilla and Aquila still on good terms with Paul? The very Priscilla and Aquila that you just read about in Acts 18, 18, in the very context where Paul is fulfilling a Nazarite vow without James being over his neck, forcing him to do so, Paul doing it out of his own free will. This is a, confu this is a confusing part of it all. You don't, well, I don't know it's confusing to me. If you read Revelation chapter 2, verse uh, 1 and 2, yeah, and he's talking to all the Jews of Asia, the churches. Yeah. Revelation 2, no. Revelation 2 says that Jesus praises them. For testing those who claim to be apostles that were not. But Paul himself said the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He warned the Corinthians of false apostles. So why do you automatically assume that in Revelation 2 verses 1 to 2, Paul had in mind, I'm sorry, Jesus had in mind Paul, when here it's apostles, plural. So if it's Paul, who's the other apostle? Because it's more than one. There's more than as one. Opposed, as opposed to assuming, well, yeah, yeah. if I can make the point, as opposed to assuming that like Jesus, Paul is warning believers in Turkey and in other parts of the then known world like Corinth, there are false apostles. So Paul is in perfect agreement with his Lord 
warning people of false apostles, but now you got to show me the theology of Revelation contradicting that of Paul, whereas I can show you that Paul and Revelation agree that God is triune, Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, who by his blood redeemed us from sin. So how can Revelation be condemning Paul when Revelation's theology agrees with Paul? You want me to show you that? No, my uh, this church, this this is this is topic is confusion here about this Ephesus church. Did they agree with Paul or did they not agree with Paul? First, you know, Ephesians are not being condemned. I'm no. sorry, Ephesians are not being praised for condemning Paul. You're reading that. Yes, Jesus there are false said, apostles. Okay, but what in Revelation two shows that their theology and Christology and doctrine of salvation opposes Paul when that book of Revelation teaches the same trinity, same deity of Christ in the flesh, and same message of salvation. So if they were not in line with the theology of Revelation, wouldn't Jesus mention that and condemn them for it? Meaning, you deny that I shed my blood to ransom you and redeem you from your sins, because that's how John begins the letter in Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Which agrees with Paul, by the way. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Maybe Avery can read it. So John agrees with Paul. It's the blood of Jesus that washes us from our sins. John agrees with Paul that Jesus is the unique son of God who's omniscient and that he is the Alpha and Omega, meaning without beginning, without end. All of which agrees with what Paul says about Jesus. And you want to then assume that Ephesians, Jesus is praising them for condemning Paul because he's a false apostle teaching false doctrine. And yet John's theology agrees with Paul. In the book of Revelation. Can you read that in Revelation 1, 5 to 6? You want to read it before the rapture, brother? I can't hear you. You're muted. You're muted. Revelation 1, 5 to 6, right? Yeah. All right. Here we go. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of of kings on earth to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priests to his god and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever now and does paul also teach that it's the blood of jesus christ that has ransomed us from our sins last time i checked and does paul also teach that christ is the ruler of the kings of the earth because he is the head of all creation that's correct. Okay, so how are you going to then tell me that Jesus is praising the Ephesians for condemning the apostles, meaning Paul and whoever believes like him, when the theology of Revelation agrees with the theology of Paul? And I can give you more. I mean, I just gave you one. What about Revelation 5, 8 to 14? Revelation 5, 8 to 14, the same book of Revelation. Read that for us, Avery. Yep. 8 to 14, you said? All right. <clears throat> and when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for God for every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on earth forever. Now, before you move on, Avery, John says the blood of Jesus, the lamb, redeemed not just Israelites, people from every language, every tribe, <clears throat> all nations to rule with Christ kings and queens and serve Christ and who did that for them Jesus by his blood and the four living creatures and the 24 elders are actually worshiping Jesus because this is a song that they sing to him it says they sang a song right that's right but now read 11 and 14 to see now if this agrees with Paul's theology let's see if it agrees then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, 
Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Mm -hmm. And I heard every creature. Now, every before you move on, Avery, I want Ali to hear this part. Now, notice the language. John says, I heard every creature where? In heaven and earth. What else? Uh, hold on. Uh, in heaven and earth and under the earth and in the sea. What else? And all that is in them. Now I want Ali to see what John just wrote. Every creature in all of creation, every creature in heaven, every creature on earth, every creature beneath the earth, every creature in the sea, all things in all creation. He includes every created thing imaginable. And what are they doing, Avery? Saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Now, let me ask Ali this. Uh, uh, John just saw, saw a vision. I know you don't believe it. That's fine. But in this revelation, which you are quoting from, John yes. sees a vision. Every creature in all of creation from the beginning and the end, that means you and me, he saw all of us yes. giving the Lamb Jesus the same exact blessing, glory, honor, and might forever and ever. Does this agree with Paul or contradict Paul? Yeah, this uh, this agrees with like he said about about Jesus dying and all that. Yeah, yeah. Not only dying, don't miss that part. He says every creature in all of creation gives Jesus the same worship that God the Father receives. So if every creature, because he says in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, and the sea, all things in them. So there's all creation on one side. Jesus is not part of them. Jesus is on the side with the Father, showing that he's uncreated, which is why he's worthy of the same glory and worship the Father receives. Does this agree with Paul or contradict Paul? Yeah, it kind of agrees with it. So then how could the apostles that Jesus praises the Ephesians for condemning as false apostles include Paul when the theology of Revelation agrees with Paul's theology? I don't, I don't know, but the only argument I think the only argument there was they were doing is that he's making them turn against the laws. That was the main argument. But where is the words in Revelation? Where does Revelation say that Jesus is praising the churches because they're Torah observant? No, my argument is here. Yeah, how come Jesus did not even, you know, he, you know, when uh, Paul is saying that all of Asia, whatever, yeah, it's my part of it. Why didn't Jesus even talk to one of these churches? The ones that said no to Paul, you know, they re rejected him. Why did Jesus where, not? Where, did, where, did, where do you find the Ephesians saying no to Paul when Paul wrote a letter to the Ephesians and they're in good standing with Paul? And then after Paul, you have Ignatius, the bishop of Antioch, Syria, an eyewitness of the apostles who met the apostles appointed by them. And of all places in Antioch, Syria, which is where they were first called Christians. And he wrote a letter to the Ephesians long after Paul was martyred. As Ignatius was about to be martyred, and he's praising the Ephesians for glorifying, worshiping the Trinity like he did and Paul before him. So where do you find the Ephesians turning, all of them turning against Paul? And you even read 2 Timothy 4. He sent Tychicus to the Ephesians. That means they were still in good standing with him. So where are you getting this from? I would like to see it. I'm still waiting. This is a complicated one. All right. Anyway, Ali, I have to get ready in about 30 minutes. But look, you are a very respectful chap. And as long as you're respectful, we'll have respectful conversations. You're more than welcome to come to my channel. Yeah. I really, really appreciate I mean this because yeah. you you see, I swear, well, because I get people who say that my God came out of Oman's Volvo, et cetera, et cetera. But when yeah. someone's respectful and doesn't mock the Lord or bless, I, I have nothing but respect. And I really tip my hat to you. You're a credit to Islam because you're very respectful and I'm impressed. Keep it up. We'll have fruitful discussions. But I got half an hour to start my live stream. So, guys, when you're done here, come to my live stream. We're yeah, going to talk about some nice. issues. So I love you guys and Ali. All right, cool. As a brother in humanity, I love you too. And I'll pray that God will guide us into the fullness of the truth. All right? Yeah, Sam, before you go, do you, do you have, a, do you have a, a chapter of the Bible that you can give someone to read before going to bed tonight? Well, yeah. well I would say read Revelation 5 and Philippians 2, 9 to 11 together and meditate on how Paul says that the day will come, every creature in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth will 
glorify Jesus, confessing him as Lord to the glory of God the Father. And in Revelation, John sees that as a reality already taking place. Amen. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. You can read from 5 to 11 and Revelation 5. So guys, join me in a half an hour and pray for me. I'll see you. Send, send me the link so I can post it here. All right. That works. Oh, my God. Logic.